Hi there, my name is Aaron Lancherman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. Suppose you needed to compute the Fourier transform of e to the minus five, t minus three, u, t minus three. So this is a decaying exponential that starts at three. Well, you might take this and try to insert it into the Fourier transform integral, but that's a lot of extra work. If you think back a couple of lectures, we already computed a Fourier transform pair that looked like e to the minus a to u t Fourier transforms into one over j omega plus a. So if we can somehow twist this transform pair around to make it look like this transform pair will be in business. Fortunately, this is a fairly common scenario, and on top of all of the Fourier transform pairs we can compute, we also have a set of Fourier transform properties that we can derive to make tasks like this easier. So today, in the lecture of the Summer 2020 offering of EC3084 Signals and Systems, we will look at the delay property. So a lot of these properties will have a form along the following lines. We'll assume that we know some particular Fourier transform pair, little x of t transforming into big X of j omega. We'll assume that's given to us somehow. And the property we're going to look at today will ask, what's the Fourier transform of t minus t naught in terms of big X j omega? So a common proof technique is to simply take the thing you're trying to find the transform of in this abstract form and go ahead and plug it into the Fourier transform integral. So that Fourier transform integral is going from minus infinity to infinity. And what I usually call x of t, we're instead plugging in x of t minus t naught. So we'll multiply this against e to the minus j omega t dt. The name of the game is to try to manipulate the expressions you get into things that you recognize and that have familiar forms. So here, let's do a little change of variable, calculus style. So I'm going to write tau equal t minus t naught. Don't worry, this is not convolution. I'm picking tau just because I need something that reminds us of t. So this guy here is just tau. So I'll write minus infinity to infinity x of tau e to the minus j omega. And what should we do with t? Well, if I move this over to the other side, I wind up with t equal tau plus t naught. So I've got tau plus t naught substituting in here. And then the differential will just be dt is equal to d tau, nothing fancy there. So I'll have a d tau sitting here. I should mention that in general, you'd also need to think about what happens with the limits. But here I'm going to be adding or subtracting something and adding and subtracting something from minus infinity or infinity doesn't change anything there. We still have an integral going from minus infinity to infinity. So in the next step, we're going to take our exponent and split it up. So I'll write this as e to the minus j omega tau, e to the minus j omega t naught d tau, and then this e to the minus j omega tau naught, that is not a function of tau, so I can pull it out in front and write it as e to the minus j omega t naught. Then I've got this integral of minus infinity to infinity, x of tau, e to the minus j omega tau d tau. And oh, this looks amazingly familiar. This whole thing here, what is this? Well, this is just the Fourier transform of little x. This is big X of j omega. So now I can say that a shift in the time domain corresponds to a multiplication by e to the j omega t naught, whatever that time shift is, in the frequency domain. So now let's apply that property we just proved to the problem that we started the lecture with. So we know that e to the minus 5t ut will transform into 1 over j omega plus 5. So now via the shifting property, we know that e to the minus 5t minus 3 ut minus 3 will correspond to e to the minus j omega 3. 
because 3 is that time shift over j omega plus 5. And that is a whole lot easier than plugging that into the Fourier transform integral and doing everything from scratch. And in fact, to most easily do that integral, basically be doing the same kind of change of variable we just did to actually prove this more general property. Let's do another quick and easy example. In the last lecture, we showed that delta t transforms into a constant of a 1. What would delta t minus t naught transfer into? Well, using the shift property, we would just take this 1 and multiply it by e to the j omega t naught. Well, that's just e to the minus j omega t naught. Now, this shouldn't surprise us because we actually proved this in the last lecture using the Fourier transform integral. This would be just another way to think about it. I've previously told you that if you multiply two functions in the time domain that corresponds to multiplying their Fourier transforms in the frequency domain. Okay, so just tidying up this expression a bit to make space, let's think a little bit about potentially alternate ways of writing this x of t minus t naught. Well, I could write it as x of t convolved with delta t minus t naught because we know that does a shift. But in that case, I know that this convolution in the time domain corresponds to this multiplication in the frequency domain. So what I would wind up with is this big X of j omega, the Fourier transform of little x, times the Fourier transform of delta t minus t naught, which we have down here. So if we've got this transform pair down here, and we have this convolution property, we could use that to prove this delay property. 